Very good morning, students. Welcome to the annual session of Variation and Hydraulic Structure subject. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about modes of failure of a gravity dam, or else we can also call them as causes of failure of a gravity dam. So we have seen four different uh, causes of failure of dam, modes of failure of dam, like overturning, sliding, compression, and tensile forces. How they are causing the failure of the gravity dam. So that we have discussed in the last class. Now in today's class, we are going to discuss about what is the elementary profile of a gravity dam. What is the meaning of elementary profile and what is the meaning of practical profile that we are going to discuss in today's class. So before that, let us start the elementary profile of a gravity dam. So what is the meaning of elementary profile? Why it is used? Why it is so important to learn, understand what is elementary profile? Let us see now. See here you can see the picture. In the picture you can see there is a elementary profile is shown. So this elementary profile is considering having a triangular shape. So this triangular shape is, is perfectly balancing or contracting or opposing the whatever the horizontal force is there, sliding force is there. So that is contracted exactly. Okay. So, it will give means, it will improve the stabilizing force. So, whatever the elementary profile, which is a right angle triangle is shown in the figure, that will provide more stabilizing force compared to any other type of section or angle. So, right angle triangle will provide you the maximum amount of stabilizing force with no causing tension, with no tension causing in the base of the dam. So if you take other than 90 degrees, other than right angle triangle is considered as a elementary profile. In that case what happens? So this will create, this will give you the more stabilizing force. This will give you the more stabilizing force, but it will create some tension in the base of the dam. So which is not at all sensitive because the concrete is weak in tension. So that is the reason right angle triangle is the best elemental profile, best suitable for elementary, elementary profile. Okay, so which will create more stabilizing force in a similar fashion, no tension developed in the base of the dam. That is what we require for a safe design. Okay, so here in the picture you can see here, in the picture it is shown that the height of the dam is H, capital H and base of the dam is B, small b here. So here center is marked at a distance of B by 2 and uh, this is the top of the dam and this is the elementary profile of the dam, right angle triangle. So here forces are acting like horizontal force is acting in this direction here you can see which is acting at a distance of one third of the height of the dam. So at a distance of H by 3 the horizontal force is acting so which may be considered as water pressure so this is acting at this point and now weight of the dam so whatever the weight of the dam which is acting vertically downwards in this direction so these two horizontal and vertical forces water pressure and weight of the dam are acting at this point at this location so this the resultant force at this location or at this point the resultant force R is acting in this direction Okay, the resultant force R is acting in this direction which is exactly at a distance means eccentricity which is acting at a distance of B by 6 from the center B by 6 from the center of the base of the dam B by 6 from the center of the base of the dam so this resultant force is acting at a distance of M2 so and when no water pressure is there when horizontal pressure like H is not there so then only one force will be there in the dam that is vertically downward force which is weight of the dam. So in the absence of horizontal pressure, water pressure, so the weight is acting at a distance of again B by 3 from the, sorry B by 6 from the base of the dam, from the center of the base of the dam. Okay. So in any case it is safe. Okay. So here you can see the elementary profile, uplift pressure is also shown in the figure. Okay, now please understand the elementary profile should be considered as a right angle triangle for providing the 
more stabilizing force with no tension developed in the base of the dam. Please understand this point, remember this point. Now moving on to the next slide. Yeah. So in this slide, here you can see the elementary profile of a gravity dam. So in this particular uh, elementary profile, here you can see we shall consider the following three forces in elementary, if we take elementary profile into consideration. So there are only three forces acting on the elementary profile. So other than, uh, sorry, only three forces are considered. So that is weight of the dam and the second one is water pressure and third one is uplift pressure. So for elementary profile, these are the three forces which we need to consider which are acting on the elementary profile of the gravity dam. Okay. So here weight of the dam which already known which is, so as this is triangular, right angular triangle, so weight of the dam is calculated that is half into B is base, base width of the dam and H is the height of the dam and rho is the specific gravity of the material, specific gravity of the dam material and uh, where W is the density of water, weight of the, the second force whatever we are considering here that is water pressure. So this water pressure is denoted with P. So this water pressure is again calculated as half into WH square. So where W is the material weight and uh, whereas uh, H is the height of the dam H square. So this P water pressure is acting at a distance of one third of the height of the dam. So that is at a distance of H by 3 from the base of the dam this water pressure is acting. So here it is indicated here at H by 3. Now next uplift pressure. So this uplift pressure is indicated with U and this is calculated as half into C into W into B into H. So these are weight, width as well as the height of the dam are considered in this particular this one. Okay, so these are the three elemental force are considered if we consider elementary profile of a gravity dam, which is a right angle triangle. Now here one more important thing is how to calculate the base width of the elementary profile. What are the precautions or what are the steps to be, steps to be followed in case of calculating the base width? How much is it as per the general profile of the dam or else how to calculate the base width? Let us see. So here the same picture is shown here. So when the reservoir is in empty condition. So here in calculating the base width of our elementary profile two important conditions are taken under consideration. By using those we can calculate base width. One is the stress criterion and the second one is stability or sliding criterion. So these are the two conditions by using which base width of the elementary profile can be calculated. Okay. Now let us see what is the stress criterion first. So in the stress criterion again two conditions are there. When the reservoir is empty, let us assume the reservoir is in empty condition and we want there should not be any tensile stress developed in the base of the dam. So for this what happens? Whatever the resultant force that is because of horizontal and vertical forces so develop, so that resultant force should act at a distance of B by 3 from the center of the dam, that is second B third, means that is the inner third, the inner third point which is M1, here in the figure it is shown here. So at this distance, at this distance, we want the resultant force should be acting. What is the meaning of when reservoir, reservoir is empty? means there should not be, there is no horizontal force acting. So P is 0 here. So when P is 0, what happens? Only vertical forces, that is weight of the dam will be there in the, acting in the dam. So this weight of the dam is directly acting in a straight direction. So that is acting here. So that is at a distance of B by 6 from the center of the base of the dam. So it is satisfying. This condition is satisfied here. So in the next case, when the reservoir is in full, so in the full reservoir condition, what happens? If we want there should not be any tension developed in the base of the dam. So in that particular case, what happens? Our resultant force, 
whatever the resultant force is there because of vertical and horizontal forces this resultant force should act at a outer third point outer third point that is at m2 so which is acting at a distance b by 6 from the center of the base of the dam okay so two conditions are satisfied in the elementary profile in order to avoid tensile force or tensile stresses developed in the base of the dam okay so that is what you have seen here two conditions okay now taking moments about m2 and equating to zero so whatever the three forces which you have considered that is weight of the dam and the uplift pressure as well as water pressure those three forces if we take moment about m2 so about m2 anyway m2 because uh, whatever the resultant force which is acting at a, the same point so the resultant force will be zero so we will take the moment about m2 for the remaining three forces so here you have seen half into wh square which is acting at a distance of h by 3 so from this point it is acting water pressure plus half into cw bh which is acting also also acting at a distance of b by 3 what is this this is your uplift pressure so whatever this force is there cwh this is the uplift pressure which is acting at this so in contracting this is acting in the upward direction and whereas the weight of the dam which is acting in the downward direction so uplift pressure minus weight of the dam so this will give you the this will give you the uh, what we call the total moment at this m2 at a point m2 so after getting this equation after getting this equation what you have to do you have to multiply the entire equation with 6 by wh so if you multiply this equation with 6 by wh then the equation will be forming like this h square plus c b square minus b square into rho so here what we need to do we need to calculate the base width so base b is highlighted here so which is equal to base b is equal to h by under root rho minus c which is under root rho minus c okay now here so that is how you can compute by stress criteria from stress criteria you can calculate the base width of a elementary profile in this way now by considering sliding or stability criterion so in this criterion what we have to do for no sliding to occur if the if you don't want the dam to slide so no sliding should be there so in that particular case what happens for sliding only the horizontal force will be responsible so whenever the horizontal force horizontal pressure is acting on the body of the dam so this will create some horizontal pressure and it will also leads to the sliding of the dam so this sliding force will be resisted only with the help of frictional forces at the base of the dam between the foundation as well as between the base of the dam if sufficient frictional forces are existing then only we can avoid the sliding forces so okay so hence so whatever the force we require that is p is equal to mu into w minus u where w is the weight of the dam downward acting and where is the u is the uplift pressure where u is the uplift pressure here okay so here half into where p is equal to half into water pressure here so this is half into w square which equals to mu into so let us substitute weight of the material weight force and uplift force here so this after this from which we will get the value as base width which is b is equal to h divided by mu into rho minus c so this is how you can compute base width by using elementary profile of the gravity dam under the stability or sliding criterion so this is the procedure for calculating the base width so this is how you can calculate now moving on to the next slide now here one more important thing is how the stress developed in the elemental profile is calculated what are the stresses developed at the toe as well as at the heel 
So how to calculate them and what are the stresses to be considered where the stress is zero that is how we have to calculate in the elementary profile. So if you see if you take the normal stress condition if you take the normal stress condition in general so that is Pn indicates the normal stress which is already derived in the previous equation that is V by B into 1 plus or minus 6 E by B. So where V is equal to here what we are doing it is the net force okay, which is the net force that is upward forces minus downward forces. So weight of the dam which is W and uplift pressure which is U. So W minus V you will get the V value here and in this case what is E? E is equal to again V by 6 in order to develop no tension in the base of the dam. So if we substitute V value as well as E value in this equation then the for full reservoir condition the normal stress at the two. So if you want plus or minus equation, so for full reservoir condition, the normal stress in the toe is <coughs> given as, it is considered as plus. So here Pn is equal to V by B into 1 plus 6 E by B. So if you substitute U is equal to U minus W minus U, and so less E is equal to V by 6, then the final equation will be 2 into W minus U by B. So that is what we are getting here. And if you substitute water equation, water pressure equation as well as, so weight of the dam equation as well as uplift pressure equation here, then the resultant equation of normal stress at full reservoir condition will be WH into rho minus C. So that is the normal stress at the toe under full reservoir condition. Please remember this equation, this is very very important. Now the next condition is at heel under full reservoir condition at heel what is the force. So already we have seen that at heel the tensile stresses will be there so we have to consider the minus so V by 6 Pn is equal to V by 6 into 1 minus 6 E by B we have to consider here and if we substitute the same values here then 1 minus 1 so V by 6 will get cancelled 1 minus 1 so under full reservoir condition the normal stress at heel under full reservoir condition the normal stress at heel is equal to zero please remember this point keep it in mind now for full reservoir condition the normal stress at heel will be zero now here what about the principal stress as well as shear stresses developed at toe and heel let us have a look at them also so here principal stress is equal to sigma 1 is equal to Pn into secant square theta whereas uh, secant square is uh, calculated as hypotenuse is under root h square plus b square. So if you take secant of this one then this will be h square under root h square plus b square by b. So if you substitute this equation here then you will be getting whereas Pn is equal to already calculated that is w into h into rho minus c that is previous in the previous equation we have calculated pn here so that pn is substituted here and uh, whatever the secant square is there that is v by h whole square plus 1 so after simplifying this if you substitute this one you will be getting this value here okay now from the previous equation we have seen in the previous equation v by h whole square is equal to 1 by rho minus v from the previous equation this is derived so if we substitute in place of V by H whole square 1 by rho minus C then you will be getting the final equation like this. So then the normal stress sorry sorry the principal stress at the toe is given as sigma 1 is equal to WH into rho minus C plus 1. So this is the normal sorry principal stress at the toe. Okay in a similar fashion if we consider the shear stress. Shear stress tau is equal to Pn into tan theta where tan theta is equal to so again if you substitute here and WH into P minus P so tan theta is B by H straight away theta is equal to B this is base and height so this is B by H and uh, here you can see after substituting the finalized equation for the shear stress will be WH into under root rho minus C this is how you have to calculate principal stress at toe 
and principal stress at sorry shear stress at toe for full reservoir conditions. Okay. Now here since the normal stress at normal stress at uh, what we can call heel is zero. Normal stress at heel heel is zero for full reservoir condition. Then what we can say the principal stress as well as shear stress will also become zero. Now. We have seen full reservoir condition. So similarly, what about empty reservoir condition? If the reservoir is in empty condition, the reservoir is in empty conditions. What we can see is, when the reservoir is empty, the only force acting that is weight of the dam. That is, there is no water pressure acting on the dam. Okay, because the dam is empty, no water is there in the dam. Okay, so the weight only acting. So this weight should be acting at already discussed in the third point that is m1 point already seen in the figure so that is which is at a distance of v by 6 from the center point of the base of the dam okay so then the maximum compressive strength or compressive stress at heel will be given as w by d see here v vertical resultant force is not considered here previously v is considered as w minus q weight of the dam minus uplift pressure but here no uplift pressure because no water force is acting so only w is substituted in place of v so v by v into 1 plus 1 because it is compressive strength and we are calculating at heel so at heel we have compressive strength test so positive we have to consider so this is 1 plus 6 e by b so e value we have to substitute it as v by 6. So after that we will be getting 1 plus 1 here. So the final result will be 2 w by b. Okay. Now the corresponding tension at the toe will be same it is 0. So in the reverse case. So the day there heel, come, heel values are 0 for a full reservoir condition. Here toe value is 0 for empty reservoir condition. Vice versa. Please remember this point. Okay, so that is how you have to calculate elementary profile and why elementary profile is important and, uh, and one more important thing is this elemental profile is for studying the theoretical purpose only practically this particular elementary profile is not possible because we need to have a roadway on the top of the beam, top of the dam and because of roadway some excess loads are acting on the dam. So that we have what we have to do, we have to increase the base width at the top of the dam. So whatever we have studied this elementary profile, this particular concept is lying for theoretical purpose only for understanding the concept. So practically this particular type of elementary profile is not possible because of so many requirements. We need to provide freeboard, we need to provide roadway or carriageway. So because of that excess we need we need to increase the width and the excess loads are coming that we need to modify the changes we, we need to modify the dimensions of the elementary profile so that we are we will be studying in the practical profile of a gravity dam how this theoretical elementary profile is very practically what are the difficulties are there and how to create practical profile that we will see in the next class till then thank you so much